Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. This one's going to be a very short one. I will get back to the whole Feynman path integral videos once I have a little bit more time on my hands, so just bear with me. But today we're going to be looking at tensors again in a different way than we usually do. Usually we are, we're interested in transformation properties, right? We've shown with a counterexample that not all matrices are tensors by taking a matrix and a basis, going to a new basis, lo and behold it didn't transform as a tensor, which was pretty cool. Today we're going to be extending that whole it being problematic to immediately associate tensors with matrices, but not by looking at how they transform, but rather what they transform. Let me try to be a bit more clear. There's nothing ever stopping you from taking something like a T mu nu doubly covariant tensor or a mixed tensor T mu nu and taking all of these elements and throwing them into a matrix. But when you do that, it becomes difficult to delineate between these two. What's the difference between the doubly covariant and the, and the mixed tensor? Well, one way is definitely how they transform. They follow different transformation rules. The other is the type of transformations they serve the role as. What I mean by that is we can take this tensor and say contract it with another vector. So let's go ahead and do that. We have a T mu nu contracted with some vector, let's say A nu. And what that's going to do, since we're contracting this, this new, we're going to end up with a dual vector, so downstairs component. So know that we started out with contravariant, we're ending with, say, some b, mu downstairs. These vectors live in different spaces. This is in the regular vector space, this would be in the dual. You can't exactly do things like add them together, right? That'd be like adding together a bra and a ket, it just doesn't make sense. Now, what you could also do is you can contract it with another vector, and then you would get a scalar. So that's why this is sometimes called a bilinear form. It serves the role of taking two vectors and giving you a scalar, or taking one vector and giving you a one form, which is the, another word for a covariant vector. Now, if we take a look at the mixed tensor, this is where things get a bit interesting and a bit more physical. Because if we were to do the same thing, where we have a t mu nu, this is a muse, please don't make fun of them, I'm very self-conscious about my muse, and we contract it with the same vector, a nu, well, now the thing that's left over is upstairs, so let's call that a different vector, c mu. So we're ending up with a vector that probably lives in the same vector space. That's actually very important. That's normally what we use in physics. I don't think in general linear transformations have to spit out a vector in the same vector space, but in, in physics it usually is. But what this is, that's exactly what it is, is it's a linear operator. This is completely analogous to the operators that you use in quantum mechanics. So instead, maybe we would have an eigenvalue problem where this would be the same vector times a number, like what would happen with the Schrodinger equation. We would have the Hamiltonian acting on, say, some nth eigenstate, giving us e sub n psi sub n. How you would read that is we have an operator acting on a wave function, and it spits back out the wave function, stretched or compressed by some degree, and that amount that it's stretched or compressed, we interpret as the energy. And using linear operators, that's the only type of transformation where it makes sense to ask about eigenvalues, eigenvectors, traces. It doesn't make sense to ask those kinds of questions about bilinear forms for the same reason that it doesn't make sense to ask what is a nu plus a mu. It just doesn't offer any physical insight. So for this whole reason, you don't ever see something like T mu mu, which whenever you see the repeated indices on the same tensor, that means that you're taking a trace. And you don't take traces of, say, doubly contravariant or doubly covariant tensors, because as we just said, it doesn't make sense. Instead, what you would do is you would act on it with the metric tensor, G mu nu, T mu nu. And what the role of the metric tensor is, is it converts these other doubly covariant or doubly contravariant tensors into linear operators where now it finally makes sense to do things like calculate eigenvalue eigenvectors. But if we were to naively try to do that right off the bat by just representing this tensor on a given basis and pretending like it was a linear operator, we would just get a nonsensical answer. It wouldn't really mean anything and it wouldn't be an invariant quantity. So when we do this, this would be written as a t mu mu and that's the familiar trace. That's all I really wanted to say with this video is um, give you guys an alternative look at how to view tensors. You can look at them at how they transform or what transformations they serve the role as. Um, normally when you talk about covariant, contravariant, mixed, it's always the whole oh, contravariant has displacement in the numerator and covariant has displacement in the denominator or, or the t dx, which is fine and it works 
But I think this is just another way of looking at it because maybe they're not the most intuitive things to work with. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and got something out of it. Let me know in the comments section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.